back. Congressman Kinzinger joins us now. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What is your reaction to the censure, and what do you make of the different messaging coming out of the Republican Party and how that might impact things going forward towards the midterm? Yeah, the censure itself doesn't bother me. I mean, censure's lost all meaning. Uh, I've been censured by, it's probably about a baker's dozen different uh, GOP committees now, and now the RNC. And I think it shows that the RNC has lost its mind and it's lost its way. It shows that, you know, people like Richard Porter, Demetri DeMonte, who are the, the uh, committee man and committee woman for the GOP from Illinois, pushed this, voted for this. And that shows way more about them than me. So it doesn't bother me personally. I do fear and I am sad for the future of this country and this party because truth matters. And it's so obvious uh, that there are many who are defending lies and conspiracy. And I got to tell you, self-governance doesn't have a future if that's the case. Well, what do you see going forward if there is this? Is there a distinct split um, in people that are still following uh, Donald Trump if he might run for re-election and there's another alliance in the other direction? Or are those numbers small? I think certainly the the truth tellers in the GOP are small. Uh, we are being outnumbered quite quite handsomely, if you will, by those that uh, are you know pledged their loyalty to Donald Trump over the Constitution. So what's the future? I don't know. I think Mike Pence speaking out gives some people an off ramp. I'll tell you this: that there's no way that can be sustained. There's no way the lies and conspiracy can be sustained uh, because a country can't sustain that. Uh, I think, you know, if I was a lawmaker right now trying to sell the big lie, defending Donald Trump, I'd be very worried about what my kids in five or ten years are going to think of me uh, when they read about what I did for me. You know, I just had a new child about, what, three and a half weeks ago. Uh, I just want to make him proud. I want to make the country proud. I want to do the right thing. Congratulations on the, on the birth of your Thank son. You. Do you have a, a strategy to defeat uh, pro-Trump candidates in the primaries? Yeah, so I have this, uh, the organization Country First, country1st.com, um, and it's, we have over 100,000 members now. It's grown beyond my expectations, and I think it'll grow even more the next year. We're, we're launching an effort called Primary First, and it's encouraging people in Republican districts. You know, you know you're going to have a Republican representative. So disaffected Republicans, independents, and Democrats to show up and vote in those Republican primaries. It's made a difference. We're going to focus on some of those races because I've got to tell you, when only 5 or 10 percent of the country is picking your, con your congressional representative, it's time to turn out and vote in primaries to make that difference. You have announced that you're not running for re-election in your district. What, what are your plans? Anything in Illinois? Uh, tell, tell us. <laughs> yeah. Right now, so, <laughs> uh, look, I, I'll you know I'm going to finish out this term. I'll be happy when I'm done. It's been obviously a difficult uh, few years, uh, but I am going nowhere. I am going to continue and now broaden that fight uh, against lies, against conspiracies, and against those that will stand in front of their constituents, their district, and tell them things they know are false, like the election was stolen or January 6th was no big deal. Uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. And if that leads to anything else in politics from an elected position, we'll see. But I am more and more committed, particularly after the RNC censure and seeing people like, you know, Richard Porter, the national committeeman from Illinois, for that, you see how far we've slid and how far we've fallen. Quick, quick question on Russia. A Russian Navy moving in, 100,000 uh, troops on the border. I is this um, something where there's just going to be this Russian presence there for months? Is there, are we on the verge of a war? Where do you see an off ramp here? Yeah, I think as of today, there, it truly is imminent. I'm guessing probably when we get to the end of the Olympics, kind of mid-February time frame, the ground is frozen. It's very likely. I believe if Russia does not attack, it will be a result of changing calculus because I think they have made up their mind to attack. And so we'll see what happens. Certainly, it will cost Vladimir Putin a lot. And I would encourage the administration to make that clear. All right. Adam Kinsinger, thanks for joining us. You bet. Thank you, Take care.